Hi guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction, and welcome to the start of a very exciting reading vlog. So in this reading vlog, I plan on reading Manigold by Senlin Yu. So if you're unfamiliar with Manigold, it is Harry Potter meets Handmaid's Tale fan fiction, and it's Draco and Hermione's like love story. So I've heard nothing but exceptional things about this fanfic. I actually tried reading this about a year ago, but I was trying to listen to the audio, and at the time, not all of the audio had been released. So I, I just cannot wait. So my friend Isa actually messaged me, uh, Isa from Bump Fantasy Books, and said that she was interested in reading it, did I want to buddy read? So I will be buddy reading it with her, and I hope this book is absolutely amazing. Like I said, I've heard nothing but good things. I will say, I was a huge Harry Potter fan growing up. So it was probably the series that really got me into reading. At the time, I was, I didn't even know audiobooks existed, but my dad ended up giving me the audio CDs for, I think, Goblet of Fire. Um, and I listened to that entire book in a day and I became obsessed. And then I used to go to like the midnight launch parties and my bachelorette party was actually Harry Potter themed. We went to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on Broadway. So huge Harry Potter nerd. Uh, I am a Hufflepuff slash Slytherin. If anyone's interested, I know that's a weird combination. That's just kind of like, that's the vibe. But I'm, I'm so excited to jump into this book. It is insanely long. I think it's over a thousand pages, so I have no idea how long it's gonna take me to read this. And also I know it is very dark. Uh, definitely check trigger warnings. I'm assuming it's dark in the way like The Handmaid's Tale is dark, like that whole thing, uh, but I'm not exactly positive. So I, I just cannot wait. I will be listening to the audio of this. Um, I think it's Audiobook Warriors that created it. And I'm listening to that on Spotify. So that is how I'm going to read it. But yeah, this should be really fun. So I will check with you guys after. Oh, also, this is going to be mostly spoiler free. If there is a spoiler, I will put a spoiler warning on the page uh, just because I feel like I like watching spoiler free vlogs. So I will also have spoilers where I give my reaction, but I'll definitely put a warning up before I talk about those kind of things. So anyway, I will check with you guys after I have started Manacled. All right guys, so first check in for Manacold. So this part will be completely spoiler free. So starting off, this is pretty much what happens if Harry Potter had not beaten Voldemort at the end of Harry Potter. Um, so Harry Potter has died, unfortunately, and Hermione ended up being captured by Death Eaters and has been locked away in isolation, completely like in the dark, like deprived of any sort of like light or any sort of company for I think like five or so years, for like a very long time, to the point where like mentally she should be completely not with it anymore, but somehow she was able to stay like cognizant. So anyway, Voldemort ends up having some sort of like breeding program, which didn't make sense to me at first because I was like, why would he want to breed a muggle board with a pure blood? Because that's like so anti-Voldemort. But it's because like the magic is waning and pure bloods are infertile for some reason. So anyway, they end up taking her money out and she ends up being given to Draco. So so far, definitely dark. I forget exactly what chapter I'm on, but um, they've already had a non-con type of sexual scene. Um, yeah, so definitely, definitely dark. Check all all the trigger warnings. But I am liking it. I will say the writing in this. I was not expecting that. So I should have said this in my intro, but this is the first fan fiction I've ever read. And I don't know why, but I feel like fan fiction gets like a really bad rap and I always assume it's gonna be very poorly written. And this is not that at all. I think the writing is amazing. And also the attention to detail as far as like potion ingredients that they're mentioning that are like said very quickly in the Harry Potter books or mentioned like very, very infrequently and they're talking about them, like uh, Hellbane, I forget, I forget the exact name, but like the author of this did amazing with having all of these little nods to Harry Potter, like it fits in so seamlessly. It's, it's so well done and I'm really, really impressed. Also the mental like health kind of rep. So like I said, Hermione was deprived of like light and conversation and like everything that pretty much like makes you human. And she's suffering from PTSD, and the author spends a lot of time talking about how she has to overcome, like, now being out in big spaces. Like, Hermione, where I just stopped reading, she just had a panic attack because she stepped outside of Malfoy Manor, 
And she's not used to being outside. So she's like, the world is so vast. Like, I can't be out here. And I just feel like it was described so well. I'm just, I'm overall just very impressed by this book. And I feel bad saying that because I feel like I shouldn't think fan fiction is not up, is not as good as like published work. I don't know why I had that like thought in my head, but this is, this is better than like a lot of other indie books I've read recently. So I'm very excited to continue. Um, for the spoiler section, I, yeah, I was not expecting us to just jump right into trying to get Hermione pregnant. When he pulls out that table, I was like, oh, this, ooh, okay, this is dark. This is super dark. Um, also, there's just, I, I don't know. It's, I, I keep saying it's dark. That's like, I'm getting redundant. But I, I am very much enjoying it. I love everything that's going on as far as like the magical world. I do wonder how much of this is actually like, gonna fit with canon because they were talking about how Draco killed Dumbledore but he did it in like broad daylight with like a bunch of people around and that's not how Draco disarmed Dumbledore in the original books so like I don't know like how they're gonna change the story also were Ron and Hermione like not together in like this version of the world ever because there was talk of Hermione like being a virgin and Ginny at the time was like oh she was never like you need a boyfriend are you with Snape also, I don't understand what's going on with Snape. Like, he trained Hermione at some point to be a healer. And there's there's a lot going on. Obviously, it's a thousand-page book. So there is going to be a lot going on. But I am so excited to continue. And I will check in with you guys after I've read a little bit more. So, uh, this was, this was dark before in a, like, sexual assault patriarchy. Like, all of that kind of way. But now we've, we've moved on to graphic violence. I'm on chapter 19. A lot. It's a lot. Um, I'm Draco is doing something to a character that was doing a very heinous act, so I'm actually okay it's happening to said character, but uh, just uh, I wasn't expecting it. And it's described in a lot of detail, and it's 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 a lot. It's a very dark book. I'm gonna say that again. I know I probably already said it earlier. Uh, very very dark. Check all all the trigger warnings, but uh. Yeah, just, that, that's it. That was the whole check-in. So I just filmed some videos, so I figured now was a good time to do a manacle check-in. Like always, first part is spoiler-free. So first up, if you are going to listen to this via audio, know that the narrators change. Um, I'm assuming there's only one, like, uh, audiobook for this, and it was done by Audiobook Warriors. And I was like really vibing with the first narrator. And then suddenly in the next chapter, it is a completely different woman. And it sounds like she's in like a different sort of recording setup. Like they're not even recorded in the same place. So uh, I got used to it, but it's very jarring when that first happens. So know that going in. Um, I'm on chapter 25, 24, 25. Um, there were some things that happened. So when, I think I already did this check-in um, when I'm in the car and there was a horrible scene. Not a horrible scene, just very graphic scene. Uh, there ended up being another very graphic scene at the end of that chapter. So just know going in, there's also graphic violence and it is described in a lot of detail and it's on page. Um, just, just know that, know that. Super dark, super dark. I'm just gonna say that in every clip, it's very dark. But I'm also absolutely loving it. I'm living for Draco and Hermione's relationship. Right now, I'm kind of concerned that it might seem a little bit too, ah, sorry, my battery's dying. It might seem a little too Stockholm Syndrome-y because Hermione seems to kind of be like accepting her fate and like falling for Draco and I don't know it's because if it's because of like the environment and Draco is the only person that hasn't been like absolutely horrible to her um but yeah so that's where I'm gonna leave it for spoiler free getting into spoilers three two one that eye scene oh no is that okay so first of all the entrail scene I was like ooh, this is gross and then the attempt of sexual assault I was like oh my god not not okay um, but I'm, I was like driving to work, by the way. So this is all happening at like 6.30 in the morning. Um, and that freaked me out. But then when we get to the part where Draco's wife pokes Hermione in the eyeball and like blinds her, I full body cringe. Oh my God, that part freaked me out. But yeah, I'm, I'm obsessed. Like I love this. I have a bunch of guesses to like where this is going. Obviously Draco is trying to take Voldemort down. I don't know how he's going about that because it obviously, it also seems like he wasn't 
working with like the resistance because he was like you guys wouldn't do like any of like the things that needed to be done so i'm thinking maybe he was trying to take voldemort down like on his own my other guess is that possibly him and hermione had like a past together that she doesn't remember i i don't think that's actually right but if that is right that's like kind of crazy um also i'm very concerned because i keep talking to all my friends and you all keep saying this book wrecked you and if one of them dies at the end um one of you better warn me <laughs> Because I'm not going to be okay if Hermione or Draco dies. Um, I was talking to Jen from the Book Refuge, and she was talking about, like, a bunch of different fanfic. Uh, fanfic is going to be my new thing. I think this is going to be the summer of fanfiction because I'm just, I'm obsessed with this book. I, I love it. I love it so much. So I'm so happy about that. But anyway, I have a bunch of errands to run and things to do. I have videos to edit. So I will check with you guys a little bit later. All right, guys, so I just got a bunch of packages, and one of them is huge, and it's from Novel Wix. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I am a rep for Novel Wix, which is a bookish candle company that I am completely obsessed with. So if you notice in my background, there's a bunch of candles. All of those candles are from Novel Wix. So I love the artwork. They also are all woodwick candles, which I love. I love, like, the crackling sound they make, and they're just absolutely fabulous. So I figured we would unbox this box together. Um, I did take off my address, and then I thought I took the tape off, but maybe I didn't. So give me one second. Um, this scythe, by the way, is from, um, oh my gosh, it's from a book box. I like love it to like open packages. I don't know if you guys can see, but anyway. All right, let's open this. So a bunch of paper. All right, starting off, we have my order, this cute little card. Everything's always like super wrapped. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm very excited about this first one and it actually has to do with this vlog. So first up we have, let's see. So this is a Hermione and Draco candle. I'm gonna leave them all on the table and then like show a close up of all of the candles. But this is, smells like libraries, pomegranate and apple. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. And it's like so pretty. So that's the first one. And then I also buy wax melts from Novel Wix because I have two different wax melts. And I feel like the wax melts last like a pretty long time. So this one is retelling. Super cute. Um, let's see. Ooh, oh, this is another Harry Potter one. This is perfect. <laughs> okay. So this one is Draco Malfoy, and it smells like pomegranate and lavender and apple. Oh my God, it smells so good. Super cute. All right. And this one is Night Court. So I actually have the wax melt of this one. And it smells, it's like the perfect like salty, summery scent. I know that doesn't sound good when you say it out loud, but it smells super good. If you can smell it. If you can smell it. If you can see it, uh, it's super pretty. But I, I saw this was going to be on the sale and I was like, I need to order this right away because my husband also loves this set and he normally doesn't love like candles. So super happy I was able to get that. And then this one is, oh, Sleeping Beauty. Let's see. I don't know, maybe I did order this one. I don't know. Oh, it smells so good. Sandalwood Rose. So Sandalwood Rose is another one of my favorite scents. Um, I think she has, one of the trope candles is also, I think it's like Enemies to Lovers is Sandalwood Rose. Um, that smell is absolutely amazing. So definitely check that out. This one's Fantasy. Oh my gosh, I love the cover. Ah, oh, ooh, I like this. Lavender Tea and Tonic. And that's exactly what that smells like. Wow, that's awesome. And that's what the inside looks like. So pretty. I'm so excited. I love candles. Anytime I get one of these packages, like, makes my day. All right, and I think this is the last one. Book Boyfriend. This is another tin. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Oh, I lost some glitter. I think that's all of them. Yep. All right, so those are all of the candles. And like I said, use my code HF10 to get 10% off 
and definitely check out Novel Wix. Always support small businesses. Um, and yeah, that's it. Back to the vlog. All right, so popping on here, this is gonna be a spoiler-filled check-in. So if you don't want to be spoiled, skip to the next timestamp. Uh, so Hermione is pregnant. Uh, I was not expecting her to actually get pregnant during this. And I just feel so bad because first off, like, I'm kind of happy for her, you know, like she obviously does not want to be pregnant at this time because it makes it even harder for her to escape. And Draco was just like a complete jerk and was like, oh, I show you like a little scrap of kindness and you think I love you, you're pathetic. But also when she has a panic attack because she finds out that she's pregnant and Draco apparates and is there and is like, why would you say that to her and like not give her any warning and she gets panic attacks and like takes care of her and helps her like breathe through it. I love Draco and like I love both of them together but also I feel bad for Hermione. I just, ah, I have so many emotions. All right guys, so quick update. I'm exactly halfway into Manigold and I have thoughts regarding like pacing and things like that. So for the spoiler free section, I didn't realize this book kind of jumps um, between two timelines. So the first half of the book is like present day with the whole Handmaid's Tale time. And then there's also like a big section that takes place in the past, which does help because it answers a lot of questions um, as far as what is they're keeping from like the canon, the original Harry Potter, and what is like new with this timeline. So all of that is really explained, which I found like really helpful because I wasn't exactly sure like how much I should be referencing from the original Harry Potter. So I will say going back in time, the pacing is a little bit slower. We're given a lot of information that is very, very important. So like I'm not bored in any sense, but also like I want to get back to the romance and like there was a big reveal that happened before we jump back in time that like I'm very concerned about and I want to know about. So overall I am enjoying it. I will also say I didn't realize that not all of the audio is available via Spotify so I gotta find the rest of the audio, figure out where it's at. Um, if I can't I will finish this physically 100%. It just might take me a little bit longer but yeah so now we're gonna get into spoilers. So three, two, one, spoilers. Okay, so I kind of called it. So I remember I was talking to Issa, who I'm buddy reading this with, and I was like, what if Draco is what Hermione doesn't remember from the past? Like, what if she um, was able to like carpet, uh, car oh, wow, I cannot talk. Cartmentalize? That's not the right word. What if she was able to use Aquavents and was able to like forget about Draco? Or what if he cursed her uh, to forget or like whatever? Cause it seems like they're gonna develop like a romance with them in the past. So I'm very interested to see how that works out. Um, I also think I said like, what if Draco was working with the order? But then I was like, that can't be going on because like Draco did make fun of the order a lot and says they're not willing to do like the difficult things like using killing curses. But it seems like he aligned with the order, but he only did so so he could get Hermione because he has some sort of like infatuation with Hermione. But now they're like kind of starting to fall for each other. And I just, I want to go back to the future because I want to know what they're going to do with Hermione. First, not remembering him. Two, she is pregnant. So like, what are they going to do about that? Uh, there's just a lot of unanswered things. And I just want them to like get together finally, but like actually get together because they like love each other, not because they're trying to like produce a child and or because he controls her because he's the informant for the order. So yeah. I have a lot of wants right now, but overall, I'm loving this. I hope we get back to the future very soon. Um, I'm liking the past. It's just weird seeing Harry Potter like smoking cigarettes and just like being all like grungy. Uh, I don't know. I just, it's weird. I don't hate it, but it's just like, it's such an interesting take on like Ron also. Like I can understand him being like a strategist because like he did really like wizard's chess, but also like seeing him sleeping around with a bunch of women. It's just so different from the original. Um, in a good way though, I am enjoying it. So anyway, I'm gonna read more and then I will check in with you guys a little bit later. All right guys, so I am picking up a crumble order so I figured now is a good time to do a check-in while I'm waiting in my car. Um, I am getting to a part in Manic Gold where it's very hard to do the spoiler free, but I will say that I didn't realize that so much of this book is set in the past. Uh, there's probably like 50 chapters that are set in the past, not really doing like the whole Handmaid's Tale plot. And 
it's they're so important but I just I didn't realize how much was spent in 2003 and I think like the current is like 2008 or so but anyway I'm if you're thinking about reading this series or this book 100% do so like I have nothing I can say negative about it I'm absolutely loving it um, I will say Harry is unbelievably frustrating as a character uh, in this particular uh, reimagining or uh, fanfic. So just know that going in. But overall, I'm absolutely loving this. So I am going to switch over to spoilers just because we're at a part where it's like so hard for me to talk about my feelings without giving away spoilers. So three, two, one, spoilers. Okay, so the past completely changes how you look at the first part of the book and I really love that the author did that so Draco and Hermione um are having an intimate moment and he says close your eyes close your eyes as like sh- sh- they're having sex and it's such a parallel to the very beginning when Draco is having to sleep with her and he says close your eyes I'm not gonna hurt you and then he ends up getting sick after And now looking back, like he got sick because that is the woman he loves and has had this relationship with. And he's essentially already peeing her because she doesn't remember any of their past relationship. And like they come so far and like they have to fight for their relationship in the past that honestly, I just feel horrible for Draco that Hermione doesn't remember like where I'm at now. Um, And like I was saying about Harry, oh my God, I can't stand Harry. Like I think... The author did a really good job of, like, showing both Hermione and Harry's... Not even because I completely agree with Hermione. (laughs) Um, Sorry, this is going to be a very chaotic update. But, like, Hermione is pretty much telling Harry, hey, let's use the dark arts, just to use some killing curses here to end this war, and it's justified means, like, we need to save these people. And Harry's over here being like, how dare you use dark magic? That's not what we stand for. And, like, at one point, Hermione literally saves Ron. Saves Ron's life. And Harry's like, but you used dark magic. Why were you there to begin with? Why didn't you apparate away? So, like, I I don't like Harry. And literally, when Harry died this time, I was like, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I'm fine. I'm totally okay with him dying. Um, But, yeah, I'm just, I'm so worried. So, where I'm at right now, pretty much all of the order is dead. And Draco just broke cover by saving Ginny. Which, I don't know if Ginny actually is alive in the future and Hermione just thinks she's dead uh, like if there was a memory planted or like what's gonna go down um, I'm pretty sure Hermione does blow up a hospital and I think she does that to like save Draco's um cover so I'm guessing that's about to happen but yeah I'm just I'm so afraid one of them is gonna die if Draco dies I'd rather Hermione die. I don't want either of them to die. But, like, if I had to pick one, it's I want Hermione because I'm loving Draco right now. And, like, I don't know. I'm so nervous. So my friend Isa actually finished this. Uh, and I asked her how she liked the ending. And she, like, she was silent. She did not tell me anything. She said she enjoyed it. But, like, she didn't really hint if, like, anyone dies. And then Jen from the Book Refuge, I've been messaging her because I knew she loves the series or this book. And she was like, well, it's a romance. That's all I'm going to tell you. So I, I'm assuming it has an HEA. But yet I've read a lot of romances that have HEAs and they're not that HEA. Like um, A Thousand Boy Kisses, technically a romance. But is it? So yeah, I just, I I don't, I'm, I'm very scared. I'm probably going to finish this later tonight or on my morning commute tomorrow. But yeah, we'll see. So anyway, I will do a check-in. The next check-in is probably going to be my final check-in. And we'll see my overall thoughts. All right, guys. So this is the final check-in. I have officially finished Manigold. I've had a few days to process. And let's talk about it. So first up, we're going to have the spoiler-free discussion. And then I'll go into spoilers. So completely spoiler-free. I think that if you are thinking of picking up Manigold, 100% do it. I do think you have to have a little knowledge of Harry Potter. I don't think you've had to have read the books. But definitely, if you've seen the movies, I think it will help. Um, There are just so many nods to Harry Potter and the Wizarding World. And it's, it's, it's so good. So as far as the length goes, it's long. I can't remember the last time it took me an entire week to finish a book. Uh, no hate on anyone that it does take a while. I just know that I'm a pretty fast reader. And normally I can read a book in like two to three days. So the fact that this took me almost eight, it's super long. I also want to say I've had a lot of people message me on where I'm listening to Manacled. So I listened to up to chapter 56 or so. On Spotify, just type in Manacled. It's by Audiobook Warriors. It'll come right up. Now, it doesn't have the whole book on Spotify. So you then have to go to YouTube. And then YouTube has the rest. 
except for the very last chapter and the epilogues. I originally was not gonna read the epilogues, however, I am very happy I did. So definitely, they are not just like extra bonus epilogues, a lot goes on. So definitely recommend picking up the epilogues. But yeah, it was just, it was, it was so good. The only critique I can say, and I can't even really get into details because they are spoilers, is I feel like despite that book being unbelievably long, the ending felt a little bit rushed. <laughs> just because the way we get out of a certain situation, it just, I feel like it was very convenient. Um, and I just, I wanted a little bit more uh, to happen. I'll get into it in the spoiler section. But overall, highly, highly recommend. I am now obsessed with fan fiction. Um, I've gotten so many recommendations. I want to give a special shout out to Jen from The Book Refuge because she has like held my hand through my fan fiction journey uh, just because I had no idea where to start. I didn't even know like they had fan fiction audiobooks. I thought it was something you could only read online. And I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited to like jump into fanfic. Uh, there's also a bunch of different like Dramine, but you also, you could have like Snape and Hermione. There's a Neville and Hermione. There's just so many Harry Potter fan fictions. Um, and I'll leave a list of the ones I found so far down in the description below. So after all that, let's get into spoilers. So three, two, one, spoilers. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy they didn't die. So I, I was waiting. And I feel like this book did such a good job of building that tension and making you think one of them was gonna die. Like I was positive Draco was going out and I, I was I was so sad. Like I literally almost stopped reading. I know Issa messaged me and she was like, I, I'm gonna stop. Like, I don't wanna know how this ends. And then I got to that exact same point. Uh, there's a part where when Draco says like, tell our daughter that I saved you both. I was just crying. I was in the middle of my kitchen listening to the audiobook. And I'm just like, I'm just, I was just crying, holding what I was going to make for dinner. And I am so happy and neither of them died. I will say, didn't love Ginny. I feel like Hermione did so much. Like Ginny is alive because of Hermione and Draco. And she's still kind of hating on Draco towards the end and is telling Hermione that like, oh, Draco only loves you and your daughter. Uh, he's not great to like everybody else. Like maybe you should rethink this. Like he... They're alive because of Hermione and Draco. So like Ginny really got on my nerves. Don't get me started on Harry. And I just so, so frustrated with like all of them. But Hermione, I just, I loved how this book really showed the different sides. So like Hermione was hated on her side, not hated on her side, but she was getting a lot of pushback on her side because she wanted to use dark magic to end a war that was killing thousands of people but Harry and Ron were like, that's not what we stand for. Like, we can only use good magic, not good magic. We can only use, like, not dark arts. But then you have Draco, who's, we find out that Lucius actually did love his son and care about his son, even though he is this crazy person that is going around Crucio and killing everybody. So also that scene where Lucius just, like, kills Astoria was not was not expecting that. Kind of felt like it came out of nowhere. And then Hermione being like, did you plan this to Draco? And Draco being like, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> like, I, I love that scene. So what I was saying earlier in the spoiler-free section where I said it felt a little too convenient, the fact that Lucius just happened to have Phoenix tears, and I know it does make sense because they are a very powerful pureblood family, and they would be the type to like pass down vials of something very precious to people that people don't have access to. But I just, I don't know. I, just, I wanted a little bit more. The fact that Lucius just kind of saved the day at the very end, didn't love that. But overall, this was my, it's going to be my favorite book of the year. I No question. I can't see any book beating this. This might be my favorite book of all time, honestly. Um, I'm trying to read books now, and I just keep thinking about Hermione and Draco. Just that slow burn and the tension, and it's so good. It's so good. So anyway... Please let me know if you have any other fanfic recs, leave them down in the description below, preferably via audio, but it's getting into summer, so I do read more books physically. And thank you so much for watching this unbelievably long vlog. Um, I have no idea how long this is gonna be once I edit it, but I know I have over an hour and a half of like film, so that'll be fun. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I said this already, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday, and if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week, bye.